Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques, and today we're going to talk about how to shorten shoulder straps. Are you someone who has experience with a mix of sewing, but is looking to get into the bridal niche? This channel is for you. First, let me give you a little overview of what to expect from this video. Like I said, we're going to talk about how to shorten shoulder straps, but there's a lot of different types of straps. So I'm speaking specifically of this narrow type of strap that has a seam at the top of the shoulder. Um, and I'm not going to go any, into any detail about overlay work or beading or anything like that. I am going to go over a little bit more um, razor work and this is also going to include some hand stitching. As usual, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to approach this alteration. Um, so, you know, like, like always, according to my philosophy, there's not really, um, a wrong way or, you know, this is horrible because you do it this way or whatever. There's usually a couple of different ways of doing things and you can adjust your quality and the detail level of your work based upon the price and the bride's needs, that kind of thing. So like I said, I'm going to give you a couple of different examples. So we're going to look over the detail of this first strap example. This is the inside. And look over on the right. See the extra little row of stitches that's on the right side, on the inside? This is the inside of the strap that would be touching her shoulder. You're going to have to break open that row of stitches. This is the side that we are going to always open up, okay? So um, again, you may do it differently. Comment down below if you do it differently, um, but we don't have to be nasty to each other if we do things differently. So I'm just going to show you with my razor, I'm breaking open every second or third stitch on the top. And then I put my razor down in the groove and I cut open the seam. Now I'm going to open the strap and I'm just kind of unpacking. And that's the original seam allowance that's in the top of the shoulder strap. The manufacturer gave us a little bit of extra fabric just in case we have a nice tall lady with a long torso. You do have the potential of letting it out. But we're going to have to take this strap up a little bit. We're going to shorten this strap a little bit. So I'm kind of gesturing with my fingers where that's going to occur. Now for this first method, I did not open the other side, the inside of the strap. You know how we opened the one row of stitches? I didn't open the other outer uh, row of stitches. I know this is hard to explain. I hope this makes sense. If you have questions, of course, always put them in the comments down below. But I only opened that one, unpacked everything, I've got it laid out flat, and I'm going to, in one pass, take this up in one even row of stitches here, an even amount. I'm going to take it up, being careful to align that seam. It looks like there's a seam in the middle of where I'm working now. So you can kind of see this detail. I'm checking back on myself, making sure everything is lined up nice. This is what you're going to look for, almost like a crosshair. You want everything to be, you know, perfect squares there. So that's your, um, that's your other strap seam that we didn't open. Everything is aligned. Everything is good. If it's not aligned, you can always try it again. Um, just kind of nudge it so that the seams are perfectly aligned in the middle of that pass that you're taking. Now what I'm doing is I'm splitting that original seam allowance that was in there and we're gonna open those pieces up and lay them flat and kind of stuff them back down inside of the strap. Things are gonna feel a little tight. It's gonna feel a little tight to work around here. Um, if things are too tight to work in, just open up that original seam you can open it up as much as you need. You're gonna to have to hand sew it back though, so you don't wanna get carried away, but do enough so you can work comfortably. So there it is, splayed open. I'm gonna stuff it all back down inside of the strap, get it all laying nice and flat. Then I'm gonna pin it, and I'm gonna have the bride try it on with it kinda of pinned together. I'm gonna to warn her before she gets in it. Um, hey, there's a pin here. Don't get cut. Don't be alarmed that there's a little extra loft in your strap right now because it's not been pressed. It's not sewn together, uh, but we're just looking to make sure that the tension is pretty close to what we need. 
So you can see I've got it all stuffed in there and I'm going back to that seam that I opened up and I'm laying the, the raw edges together on the inside. Everything looks nice and flat there. Always inspect your work before you take it out or you'll be embarrassed because <laughs> we all make mistakes, don't we? We all have little bunched up areas sometimes and it's just always good to QC yourself. All right, so I'm going to pin that. A lot of times I'm going to bury the tip of that pin in the strap and then, like I said, warn the bride. All right, so everything checked out with the bride. So I've buried my knot on the inside of the strap, okay, like the, the innards inside, not, not just the side that touches her skin. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch. I'm going to kind of come up for air on the part of the strap that will be touching her shoulder. I'm going to stitch through both of those raw edges that are tucked in, making sure not to go through the outer layer of the strap, but I want to catch both of those edges and I'm going to work my way all the way across and hand stitch this together. A lot of times I'll do a double little tack right at that main shoulder seam because it's under extra stress. So I'll double tack it or add a little extra knot there. But you can see the way I was able to really get a few catches in one, in one stitch there. That was nice. Um, but I'm going to work my way through. Now a, a bad signal of bad hand sewing um, or somebody who's learning a little bit messy is to do your hand stitching too tight. Hand stitching, the beauty of it is the way that it allows the garment to just float. So you want to make sure if you pull it too tight, go ahead and pull on that fabric, take the full stretch of the fabric and make sure that that fabric is not pulling things up tense and bunching things up. So I did the knot and I hid the tail. I hope you caught that. I'm, I'm going to show you in more detail again in a minute. Now here's how it looks after it's been pressed on the tailor's ham. Now here's my second example. This is some ruched satin this time instead of the lace. This is, I've already opened this up. I kind of showed you how I did that. This one did not have the top stitch, um, but it was very clear that that side was a little easier to open than the other. But this time it doesn't matter because I'm going to open both of those seams that run along the sides of the strap. I'm going to open them both. And um, this is for if you struggle getting that crosshair that I was talking about, getting things perfectly aligned on the other side of your strap um, by doing it all in one whack. This is going to be the way to kind of reduce your frustration. So now you've got to do two runs of stitches. See that? One, two. This is your second one. You got two separate pieces. So you're going to need to make sure your measurement, the distance from the original seam allowance and your new seam is going to be exactly the same. As long as you get those exactly the same, when you go to sew this back together, you just make sure those two new seams perfectly align like a crosshair and sew them together, and it's gonna be very, very neat. So another reason why people would prefer this, um, it sometimes feels like there's a little less wrestling going on. You know what I was talking about, about you felt like you're working in really tight quarters. It can kind of alleviate that a little bit. Um, so sometimes this can take a little bit longer, but it can actually feel a little less intense. Um, and if the fabric just tends to really walk a lot, this is going to be the, the method you want to use. Now I'm sewing up that second seam that I opened. I've got my seam allowances perfectly aligned and I'm sewing on that very little edge. Um, this is nice because you get to machine sew the one side on the inside and then you're still left with only hand sewing that other side. So I'm just making sure that they line up nice and straight. And again, I'm going to turn this right side out and inspect my work and check the fit of it before I worry too much about the hand sewing. All right, so I've already, I skipped a part as you can tell, just 
you know, to save you some time. I stuffed everything back in there. I've got it laying flat and I've got it pinned. I've checked it on the bride and everything worked out great. So here I go. I'm going to bury that knot. That's what I was talking about. See, I'm burying it behind that raw edge of that seam allowance. You always want to bury your knot when you get a chance. So it's nice and hidden. And I'm going to come up. Now you can wiggle this needle through and only catch seam allowances the whole time and never come up for air on this underside of the strap. There's a lot of people that do it that way. That looks very neat and invisible. Um, but I have found personally that coming up for these little teeny tiny tacks, you know, if you make them equidistant and super neat, they look fine. They look beautiful. They're fine. Um, but coming up like that is going to reduce some of the loft in the strap for you. Now, one conversation you're going to want to have with your bride before this step, when she's trying it on, you need to ask her, would you like this alteration to be reversible or not? Um, and you give her the option. You can leave all that extra seam allowance in there. If there's not too much, you can leave it in there and press it flat. And then that way, um, if you know, you need to let it out later or her cousin is taller and she's got to wear the dress later and it needs to be let out. The fabric is there or the other way to look at it. And let me take a break here and tell you that's where I did that extra knot that I was talking about earlier. Um, so I'm making it extra strong there. Okay. So back to, back to what you say to the bride. Um, the other option is you can cut that seam allowance to where, um, you don't have all that extra fabric left in there, kind of making it too puffy. So, um, you know, I, I usually would say whatever seam allowance the manufacturer gave you, like if they gave you a half an inch or three quarters of an inch, I would duplicate that. I would leave that much in there. That way, if there's a complaint, you can say I gave exactly um, what the manufacturer gave. Now, I did not edit this out for you. I wanted you to see everybody deals with these dreaded knots from time to time and you don't always have to give up. So I wanted to show you this. Sometimes when you get a knot in your thread, you can actually take a minute and untangle it with your needle and keep on going. You don't have to give up and, you know, cut your thread and start over. So I just untangled that and then just going to keep on trucking here. So yeah, um, as you know, I like to give my brides lots, lots of options. I never cut and make an alteration irreversible without the bride's permission. Now, hems, obviously, most of the time they have to be cut. But for things that can be easily reversed, I was always taught like one very strong standard rule of tailoring is to leave the clothes reversible whenever you can. Leave your alterations reversible. Um, so here I go. I'm hiding that tail. Watch that. I did my final knot. I'm running this up through and the tail is going to be between the fabrics and then I'm going to cut that off. That way you've got that nice long tail to prevent unraveling, but nobody has to see it. And on these ruche straps, very rarely, you won't usually see that they make, make the ruching the line. And you can see we're really close to the pins, but like I said, it, it fit perfect on her. This is tested out before we hand stitch. Now I'm over here at the iron table and I've got this on my tailor's ham and I'm really pressing. I'm putting the steam on here and I'm pressing super hard. Um, I'll put in my item description down below um, information about my iron and that kind of thing. Any of the products that I use, you can always go to bridalsewingtechniques.com. I do have a bridal, um, I have the products page there for you so you can check it out. Please leave me any questions that you have down below. You guys have a great day and thanks for watching. I hope this has helped you. Please like, share, and subscribe. It means the world to me. Here comes my channel trailer if you're new here. I know what you're looking for. You've been sewing for years, but you want to get into full-time bridal sewing. But there's something missing. You're missing the backroom secrets, the industry tips and tricks.
the tools, the sources, the techniques that give you the speed and the accuracy that the industry demands. You have found it.